Recording is on. We are going to get this going. All right. So here we go. Um, program design. So today, the first couple days, we talked about training programs. We talked about, when we were talking about overall encompassing programs. All right. We talked about like the big picture, which was a training year for Jones. What was that considered? Or what was that term that we used to describe that whole training process? Macro cycle. Macro cycle. Okay. Breaking that down when we go test to test, what was that then called? Microcycle. Uh, negative Ghost Rider. Other one. Mesocycle. Mesocycle. And then the week to week. Uh, 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 Brenda, what was a week to week? Microcycle. Microcycle, okay. And then remember when we were talking about the overarching encompassing thing, that little uh, story I told you about Milo and the Bull, what was the term that we used at the bottom of that uh, overarching thing to kind of discuss why we train or why we're trying or how we're trying to get better? I believe it went something along the lines of, uh, let me pull up my, my notes one last time. There you go, pull your notes over. Overload. It was called progressive overload. Progressive overload, absolutely. Where we're talking about just creating a stimulus over and over again to make sure that you guys are getting better, okay? So we talked about two different training philosophies. We're going to discuss those in a little bit uh, later in regards to what we're talking about today. But the last portion of the program design that I want to talk to you guys about today is GPP work, Okay. So GPP also stands for General Physical Preparedness. All right? Anybody want to take a guess at what General Physical Preparedness uh, means in regards to our training or our capacity to train? I'm guessing it's having to do with something like constantly being being like ready to take on any challenge you set yourself up to. Uh, Hector, that is exactly what it is. It is essentially our body's ability. Okay, so it's your uh, it's the participants. Oh man, I can't spell today. There you go, participants overall fitness level in regards to being able to handle a task. All right? GPP is the participant's overall fitness level in regards to being able to handle the task. So as Edgar said, or uh, Hector said already, we want to make sure that you are able to handle whatever your goal is, that your body is prepared to be able to handle the training and what you're going to put it through in order to achieve that goal. All right. There's a really good quote that I love using in regards to GPP it just kind of helps explain it. And I'm going to share it with you guys right now, okay? The quote goes, a pyramid is as only, or is as, ah, is as tall, oh, I was right, hold on, I haven't had enough coffee yet, sorry guys, is only as tall as its base is wide, okay? So in regards to GPP, what we know already about it being your overall fitness level to be able to handle a task, what do you think this quote means in regards to your training it, when we're talking about specific goals that you set for yourself? You need a strong foundation in order to progress. Yeah. So the high, the other thing too you want to keep in mind is the higher of a goal you set for yourself, the bigger of a base or the stronger of a foundation you need to lay in order to reach that goal, okay? So now we're going to talk about those two different training methodologies that we talked about. Who remembers what the first one was called? The specific ways that we train. We talked about the 5x5, five five, the 6x3, the 7x2. The what was that called? Periodization. Periodization. 
And then what was the other one? Conjugate method. Conjugate method. Now, in regards to periodization, what was the overarching theme that we talked about? It was that one graph. That really sums up periodization in a nutshell. What was the, 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 the basis of periodization in terms of how we build an athlete? Incremental progress. Incremental progress, but how? Progressive overload. Keep going. The graph. Remember the graph we gave you with the arrows pointing down and up and all that stuff? Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I, someone else. Someone else. Brenda taps out. Who remembers that graph? It should be in your notes. Reps going down, weight going up. Yep. So as the intensity starts to go, uh, yes. Yeah, all right. So weight, intensity, same thing. As the intensity starts to go up, the reps start to go down. So when it comes to periodization and what we already know about GPP, where do you think most of your GPP is going to be built in a periodization type model when it comes to training? In the beginning. In the beginning. So as we are going through, where do you think the GPP is going to trend as we're building up to our peak that we're working towards? Is it going to trend up or down? Down, absolutely. Okay, so GPP is going to start to trend downward because as we already talked about the intensity or the volume, or I'm sorry, the intensity is going to start to go up. And in order for that to occur, the volume needs to go down. So therefore, our GPP is going to lessen as we're building closer to a peak. And then once that test is completed, we start the whole process all over again where we're going to have a higher GPP phase where we're building and that GPP is going to go down as we're building to the next test. Now, with the conjugate method, they have a little bit of a different approach to GPP, which is why I like using this in my gym in particular. And we didn't actually get to the point where I could use it with you guys at the school because we got locked down and everything like that. So what are the three main days, the component days that we talked about in regards to the conjugate method? There were three different types of effort. What were they? Give me one of them. Max effort. Okay. So. Effort and repetition effort. Yep. So we have M-E, D-E, and R-E. Okay. Now, based on what we know about those three days and how it was set up and stuff like that, how do you think. What's up? What was D-E? D-E, dynamic effort. Dynamic effort. Dynamic effort. I didn't put that in my notes. What was that? I'm sorry. So it was, we have max effort, dynamic effort, and repetition effort. Dynamic effort, if, who, who remembers what dynamic effort was? It's uh, trying to like move a specific percentage of your one rep max as fast as possible. Yep, exactly. You're taking a percentage or a, a specific load, and you're trying to move it as fast as possible in a short amount of time. That was dynamic effort, essentially explosive strength or speed strength, all those different characteristics. We're trying to move weight as fast as possible in a short amount of time. You can do doubles, triples, singles, things along those lines. We also incorporate accommodating resistance in there to even increase that speed effect even more. That's dynamic effort. Who remembers what max effort work was? Really simple there. Just like as much as you can lift. Yeah, as much as you can lift on that given day for that exercise that we're testing. And then repetition effort. What, were we, what was repetition effort? Who remembers that? Uh, repetition effort is basically less weight, but you have to do a lot more reps and sets. Yep, 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 absolutely. And we had talked about how you can actually include a little bit of repetition effort at the end of your other days as well. But it also could be a standalone day in this method. Now, based on what we know of the conjugate method, coupled with all of this... How do you think GPP ties into the conjugate method? Whereas periodization, it went down as we got closer to our test, the conjugate method, what do we think GPP, or what do you guys think GPP would do overall in the conjugate method based on these three 
forms of training that we have that are structured within your week to week program? It'll raise up. Not necessarily. Or it'll, or it's more like a roller coaster where it go up and down, up and down. It no, no, no. It will. It, it, your GPP will it, it will improve over time, but there's a reason that it will improve over time versus something like the periodized model. There's something more um, basic that I'm looking for. Does anybody have an idea? Maybe it's kind of like you start off really strong, but over time you lessen it and lessen it. But at the end of the time, when it's the test, it's still it's still more than you than what you first started off with. Yes. So you're there, ish. Okay. More importantly. What the difference with the conjugate method in terms of GPP work is that it's consistent or it's even throughout the time. There is no point in the conjugate method, or at least there's not supposed to be a point in the conjugate method where you have to do a base building. This is why sports like strongman and powerlifting and even like some other strength sports and stuff like that really rely heavily on the conjugate method and their efforts because you're always kind of operating at a little bit of a higher level, somewhere in that like 80 to 90% range, like you're always in that range, all right? So when it comes to GPP, you're supposed to be including it in your accessory work and your warm ups and stuff like that. And then the amount of volume you accumulate over time through the dynamic effort and the repetition effort and stuff like that, your GPP work is more even or consistent on a week to week basis. Does everybody understand that? The difference between these two in regards to GPP work. Does that make sense? Period. The difference in terms of GPP and its approach in, in the periodized model versus the conjugate method. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Anybody have any questions before I go ahead and erase? All right. There we go. Hold on, I gotta take a picture of this real quick. So now we're going to talk about how to incorporate it into your programming and the different types of it, okay? When we're talking about conditioning and GPP, like I like, they're all the same. You know, the conditioning work is just your fitness, your, your ability to build, your, your ability to increase your fitness. And in order to have a GPP or a base, you need a certain level of fitness to be able to handle what you're doing, all right? So... When it comes to building conditioning or building your fitness, there are different energy systems that the body uses and incorporates, all right? More graphs. Down here on this bottom one, we're gonna have time. We're gonna use two seconds, 10 seconds to zero. One minute. Two minutes and then over here we're gonna have max output essentially this is just how much energy you're putting out okay can everybody see that first energy system you're gonna put out a lot of energy up through here and it's gonna drop down real quick because you're operating at such a high level you can't hold it for very long. So you're going to have to come down at some point. If we're thinking, this is called the phosphatogen system. Phosphatogen energy system. What are some things that we would do that you think would fall under the phosphatogen energy system? Think of anything that we do in our daily lives, whether it's in the weight room or outside of the weight room, that would fall Maybe under that 10-second like window. Deadlift. What's up? 
maybe like deadlifts because like you're having to put on all that sort of like right. weight on your legs just to like hold it up. Yep. Like yeah, know. yeah, absolutely. A max effort lift would definitely fall under that phosphatogen system. What else? What else? Think outside of a barbell. Sprints. A sprint, yeah, absolutely. A sprint. A short sprint would be something. A box jump. Anything that is just going to require a ton of muscle fiber recruitment in a short amount of time is going to fall under that face meto, uh, uh, phosphatogen system. The next one that we have, you're going to put out a pretty good level of energy, but then it's going to taper off at about a minute, right? This is our anaerobic energy system what are some things that we can do or that we do 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 haha -ha, um that fall under that anaerobic energy system that go from about zero to a minute sometimes they can go a little bit longer maybe a minute 30 possibly two minutes but more while around the minute minute 30 mark what are some things that we can do that fall under that think of just general everyday activities Maybe stuff like helping like your folks carry like, I don't know, something like, like maybe helping your folks out with like chores or something like that. I like, I'm going to go with carries. You can do a carry with a heavy weight, picking up a sandbag, a tire, doing that oh, for yeah, a minute like straight. Carries, like helping out with like, say, lifting furniture. Stuff. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A carry, moving something like an odd object or something like that. We're, we're going to apply it back to training. And stuff like that because this is all coming back to training you're not you can't write down in somebody's training program go help your parents move okay so we want to make sure that we're tying this back into training and stuff like that okay bud so i like that though where your head is at in terms of carrying like those the the, the time aspect that you're at I, I really like where your head's at with that what are some other things you could do i like to use track and field to label these different energy systems because there are events in track and field that fit every one of these energy systems that we're going to talk about. So what kind of track and field events would fit under the anaerobic energy system? The 400? Yeah, like a 400 meter dash, okay? Uh, even a 200 would fall under there because it's not quite 10 seconds. I don't know anybody that run a 10 second 200. So it would fall more in that anaerobic, right? Then the third energy system that we're going to talk about is little bit lower output but it's got a longer duration okay this is our aerobic energy system what are some things that we do on a regular basis that fall under the aerobic energy system that are just longer duration longer than two minutes that we have to maintain a average or like a medium level possibly low level of energy output jumping jacks jump rope uh let's see what else just some normal like running in place um i'm gonna tell you right now i'm not doing jump ropes for more than two minutes in a row um i put that probably more with the anaerobic energy system think lower intensity my man i like where your head's at but that would be more aerobic or anaerobic we're thinking more aerobic um, you probably could do like five minutes straight of jump rope, but that'd be on the lower end of it. And that's, I still think that would be a higher energy output. We're talking about lower energy output. So what are some other things we could do? If you walked up mad stairs. Say that again. Oh, if you, if you walk up mad, like there's like a lot of stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Walking stairs. Uh, yeah. So we're going to put up here. We're going to put. 55 meter, 100 meter, right over here. We're gonna put 200 meter, 400 meter. In track and field terms, what are two events that would fall under the aerobic energy system? My track and cross country guys and girls. Like a mile or two mile? Yep. 1600, 3200. Okay, does this make sense for everybody with the energy systems and, and, and how they apply based on GPP and your general fitness? Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, I guess so, because it's like 
constantly like how much you're gonna have to do within like a certain amount of time pretty much yeah and and and, and essentially hector in order to increase your ability in each of these energy systems, you think about it in more of a time capacity. Like how long you can maintain high output for 10 seconds. The more you can maintain for, or the, the, the more output you can maintain for 10 seconds, the better off you're gonna be. The more of like an average output you can maintain for about a minute, the better off you're gonna be. And then the more you can maintain a low amount of output for a very long period of time, you're gonna get better at that aerobic capacity. Now, when it comes to GPP and adding conditioning work and stuff like that into your training, we have two main ways that we're gonna talk about. We have interval and then we have steady state. Okay, steady state, we haven't done a ton of talking about. Intervals, we have. What are some things that we either have done or have talked about or that you've seen in your workouts that would fall under the intervals? What are some examples of interval training? Tabata. Tabata, absolutely. Somebody remind me, what is Tabata? 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off? Nope. Minute on, 30 seconds off? Nope, lower, lower, lower. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Yep, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. How many rounds? Eight, right? Yes, sir. Okay, Tabata is a variation of interval training where we're doing, so you can either do one or multiple movements. For 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off for eight rounds. Another one that we can use, um, we haven't talked too much about it, but it's a pretty popular one, is HIIT training, okay? Um, HIIT training in and of itself is just your ability to accomplish a lot of work in a short amount of time. Um, a more popular uh, 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 form of hit um, I'm going to talk about because it has it does have a lot of benefit to it. Um, people like to bash it and talk smack about it all the time and stuff like that, but I don't care. It has brought a lot of benefit to the fitness and strength community. It has put more barbells in the hands of anybody than any of these other sports. Strongmen, powerlifting, weightlifting have all benefited from it, and that's CrossFit. CrossFit does a really good job of taking interval training and exposing it to the masses with various forms, with various modalities, okay? So CrossFit is another form of interval training. And the way they do that, one of their things, operating kind of on the same principle as HIT, is RFT which stands for rounds for time. So you could have a couplet, which is two movements, a triplet, which is three movements. And you have like a rounds, like two, three, four, five, six, ten, 10, whatever. And you have to complete all those rounds in the shortest amount of time as possible. Very similar concept to that hit where you're accumulating a lot of work in a short amount of time and you're trying to improve your overall fitness. All right. Another one that they utilize, which I'm a huge proponent of and I love is something called OTM or EMOM work. OTM, on the minute, EMOM, every minute, on the minute. What do you think that does? Where, what do you think that, um, that, that accomplishes or how it works? Come on now, use context clues. On the minute or every minute on the minute? Is it like you have to do something for a minute? And then a minute is your time frame. More importantly, you have a minute to accomplish the task, but it's not, you don't have to necessarily use the whole minute. So I like using it for a lot of barbell stuff, but you can use it for pull-ups. You can use it for push-ups, whatever, essentially. So let's say, let's take a push-up. You give yourself a timer and you set up five minutes. Every, every minute you have to complete five push-ups. In five minutes, you've done 25 push-ups. You're accumulating as much volume as possible in a short amount of time. And then if you're a little bit more in shape, you can do 10 push-ups every minute, or you can do 15 or 20 or whatever. And like the better you get, the more you can increase your capacity. And the goal with EMOM work is once you get the task done, you have the rest of that minute to recover, okay? 
Another one that they use a lot of, which I like as well, is AMRAP. Anybody know what AMRAP stands for? Using context. As many reps as possible. As many reps as possible. I like these a lot. You can give yourself one or two movements, and you can literally just do a superset where you're bouncing back and forth. Give yourself a time frame. Anywhere from, you know, like a minute to two to three, maybe up to five minutes. And you're just trying to build capacity in that five minutes, getting as many reps as possible done in that time frame that you give yourself. These are just some of the ways that they have incorporated interval training, things that can help build and boost your G, uh, GPP. And then obviously another one that we can do that we've talked about already is work to rest ratios. We don't have to go into that too much because we've talked about it. If I put something, if I write one to two here, for every one minute of work I'm doing, I'm doing two minutes of rest, and we just keep repeating that process to help build our conditioning. Now, steady state. We know how intervals work, all right? How do you think steady state? What do you think the, the, the purpose of steady state work is if the purpose of intervals is as such? I'm guessing, for steady state, it's like you have to constantly keep on doing like a certain like a certain exercise over like long periods of time. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm going to shorten that definition for you a little bit, okay? It's sustained effort over time. So think aerobic energy system. So if this over here is our aerobic energy system, where do you think these two are operating more on? Photogen. Photo Ph phosphatogen, Photo yes, phosphatogen. Phosphatogen. And, and what else? Anaerobic. And anaerobic, yeah. Interval training more favors these two, whereas steady state more favors aerobic. Now, we haven't talked a ton about aerobic uh, capacity work or steady state work. So what are some examples that you could think of off the top of your head for steady state work that we can do. I don't know who this is, but they need to stop. Hold on one sec, guys. Sorry about that. All right. What are some examples of steady state work? Plank. Uh, no, think, think, think more lower intensity. Cause I'm not hold I'm not holding the plank for longer than two minutes. I'll tell you that much right now. Like, uh, like a low weight deadlift, but a lot of times or something. <sighs> Let's think without a barbell, without a barbell in your hand. Really? Like we're bringing it down to basic here. Running. Uh, running. Yeah, exactly. Guys, make it simple on yourselves. Running. Running is a real easy one. What else? Um, I guess you could also include walking. Yeah, walking. Absolutely. You can do some power walking, put a vest on. What else? Thinking along those lines. What else? Maybe bike riding. Yeah, riding a bike. One of my personal favorites because I don't like running or really walking. I'm going to go sled drags. What else? You got bike, running, walking, sled drags. What else? Rowing. Hiking. Rowing, yeah. Hiking would go under running or walking. I like rowing. Anything else you guys can think of? I guess you could, I guess wall climbing. Yeah, wall climbing could be, yeah, just more a little bit of recreational activity. Anything else you guys are thinking of? How about swimming? Do you think swimming would count? I mean, yeah. All right, well, I'm glad you got your approval. Okay, those are some great examples of steady state work. Now, another thing that I will sometimes incorporate with my athletes if they have the ability to do so is attaching a heart rate monitor, okay? So heart rate monitors can be huge for both of these, but I like them a lot more for building aerobic capacity. And the reason for that is Adding a heart rate monitor, whether it's on your watch or it's a strap attached to you, it allows for you to build, you're, you're, you're trying to keep a body at a certain heart zone range or, or, or heart rate 
uh, for the entire uh, 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 workout. So whatever, whether it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, etc., you're trying to keep your heart rate up to a level that you're going to continue to build and get better and get more fit. Okay. So these are the two methods that I like to use for conditioning and GPP work. Based on the conjugate method, when we know, even with the periodized model, when would be really good times to incorporate these into our training? Knowing what we know about our training breakdown of the day, what, what sections of our training can we incorporate both of these into? Carries? No, no, think more broader. Think more broader. Like, remember how we were breaking down our workouts each day? What sections of each workout would these things fit really well into? interval yes but where so we got we have our warm-up we have our main movement we have our accessories where can we fit these in oh main movement yeah main no you wouldn't really you're not you're not doing conditioning work for your main movement that would be accessories then okay accessories is one of them what's another one Yes, that would be warm-up as well. Yes, that is what I'm looking for. Thank you. Warm-up. Okay? Warm-up and accessories. That is the beautiful thing about the conjugate method and people that include the conjugate method. You can even do this in periodization stuff as well, um, but it kind of defeats the purpose, and you have to monitor it as you get closer to your test. But you can include this stuff in your warm-ups and your accessories. It doesn't have to be just strictly rolling out and stretching and stuff like that. Like how many of you guys that have taken my class have get a pretty good sweat on after we're done warming up for whatever we're doing that day? Right? Like after doing all the crawls and the jumps and stuff like that, like you guys are pretty ready to go, right? Are you not getting more fit? Are you not building a bigger base to be able to handle what you're taking on that day? Yes, no. You are building a bigger base. Exactly. Thank you. All right. And at the end of the day, all of this ties back into what was the three letters that we used to talk about how we're tying all this back in to our overall training plan. GPP. GPP. Okay. Any questions? Any questions on this?